Good morning and welcome to worship this day on uh, this day, which is our rally day, which we're going to celebrate after worship. And uh, this day that we get together uh, to be people of Christ, the body of Christ, gathered together by the Holy Spirit. So let us come and let us be nourished and inspired and let us worship. stand for the call to worship. Ever-present God, forever seeking us, always calling us. Open our minds to the wisdom of your grace. Open our hearts to the gentle caress of your love. Open our lips to share stories of faith. Open our hands to create beauty, do justice, and show kindness. Open our souls to the breath of your spirit. Open our mouths to sing boldly and loudly your praises. And in the footsteps of your wisdom, God, we come to follow, to love, to serve. Let us join together in hymn 128, He Leadeth Me. <clears throat>
Join me now in the opening prayer. God of infinite tenderness and strong compassion, weave your will into the fabric of our lives. Weave your wisdom into our hearts, joy into our songs, your peace into our prayers, and your justice into our deeds. Let this time of worship be a holy moment where the frayed edges of our lives are woven into a beautiful tapestry that comforts and blesses, inspires and renews. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Would you be seated for a moment? We have a special moment now. Thank you, God. As is our tradition in our church, when someone enters third grade, they get a Bible. So I want to invite up Sydney and Charlie. These two young people get to receive their Bibles today. So I need to make sure that I give the right one because your Bible has your name in it. So this, Charlie, is your Bible. You're very old. And this, Sydney, is your Bible. So why don't you guys come here? And I'm going to say a prayer for you. Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you so much for these young people, for these Bibles that they received this morning. We pray, oh Lord, that they may guide them and lead them, inspire them, and give them the wisdom to, um, that they may follow all their days. We pray for our children as they begin Sunday school, our teachers, um, in the way that they instruct them and lead them. Be with all our children, oh God, as you are with us as you lead us and guide us in your way, in your love, in your grace. Amen. So you guys may go, and you may go off to Sunday school. I invite everybody to stand. Let us share and pass the peace of Christ with one another.
Okay, this is my morning for exercise, I'm sure. All right, we have an Old Testament lesson this morning from Proverbs. I wonder how many read Proverbs very often. This is a book of wisdom, and Tim, I think, is going to explain a lot of that to us. Today, though, we're going to read um, the Proverbs 1, 20 through 33. This is Call of Wisdom. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, have stretched out my hand, and no one heeded. And because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you, when, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel, 
and despised my reproof. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way and be seated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. Thank you. Our gospel lesson this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 22. It's there in your bulletin. I invite you to stand for the reading and the hearing of our gospel lesson this morning. Hear these words from Matthew 22. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. May God add his blessing to our hearing and living out of the word this day. You may be seated. Several years ago, I went boating with a friend, and while we started the day in bright sun, when we came back, the fog had come in early. And all of a sudden, we went from this bright sun to thick pea soup in a mist. And my friend who owned the boat turned it into the direction of the harbor with the help of a compass. But I wondered, how do you find the entrance to the harbor? How do you avoid running us aground? How do you get through the narrow channel? So we headed in, turning every so often, just missing various sandbars. And then after a fairly uneventful ride, we approached the entrance to the harbor, and the fog lifted slightly, enough for me to see that we had been riding very close to the shoreline of jagged rocks. So I said, well, how do you avoid the sandbars and know that there are rocks? And he pointed out to the left side of the boat to the buoys that are floating in the water. And through colors and symbols, the buoys tell an experienced boater about shallow water to avoid, sandbars to go around. And in time of fog, they point the way and guide a boat to the clear channel in the safety of a harbor. It's an image like this. I think about that day about navigating, navigating between the rocks and the buoys and realize that a boatman can either learn the hard way or can learn to read the buoys that are guiding them. Isn't that like life? We are all navigating our lives by something, some knowledge, some advice, some experience, and maybe hopefully some wisdom. And defining wisdom can be tricky. There's a quote I remember that says, Never mistake knowledge for wisdom. One helps you make a living, the other helps you make a life. Wisdom is our guide through the rocks and the buoys of life. Not just through knowledge, but through the experiences of our life, particularly our life of faith. The book of Proverbs that Connie read a portion of in the beginning is all about wisdom. This book, unlike others in scriptures, has no central story. It is instead a collection of short sayings meant to teach and instruct people, particularly young people, about the path of wisdom. And wisdom is personified in this very first chapter as a woman crying out at the crossroads, bits of wisdom like, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. The heart that truly loves never forgets. Where there is no vision, the people perish and seek peace and pursue it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. Be patient and you will finally win, for a soft tongue can break hard bones. So you get the point of these bits of wisdom. You see, the book of Proverbs is really a book of buoys, marking out the safe channels in life. It represents the ripened wisdom of many generations. It marks out for a path in life to follow into the seas of life, to that abundant life that waits for us. Wisdom in the Hebrew language that's used in Proverbs is a Hebrew word called shokma, and it's a hard to translate word for us into English. Wisdom vaguely means the ability to meet the challenges put before you so as to get the best result. Put another way, God's wisdom is that little buoy, and it's bobbing up and down in the waters of life. And as captain of your boat, you have a choice. You can either follow it 
or you can head out to sea alone, or you can sail into the rocks. In our scripture, we hear wisdom speak. And it says to us in our scripture, wisdom cries out in the street. In the square, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. The challenge this morning is do we hear the call of wisdom over all the other voices that vie for our attention, that promise to lead us to abundant life, but can in fact lead us to crash upon the rocks. You see, long ago, there was a teacher with students distracted by other voices. These students' classroom was in a busy marketplace, and the marketplace was filled with swarms of activity going on all around them, and the students could not help but be distracted. And some were more interested on what was going on around them than the wise teacher who was trying to instruct them. And so this ancient teacher, very wise and creative with his teaching methods, and some of the young men in the class he noticed were interested in the women calling out on the streets. So this creative teacher personified and embodied wisdom as a woman calling out in the streets, vying for our attention. How long, O oh simple ones, the voice of wisdom calls out, will you love being simple? The students were more interested in what was going on around them than their teacher. The wise teacher wanted his students to realize and to wake up and realize that they were listening to the wrong voices. The wise teacher wanted his students to understand that there are consequences in later life due to their lack of attention now, that they were heading into the rocks without ever seeing the clear channel that lay before them, and proclaims to them, for waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. And so the question is, the question is, how do you recognize the wisdom of God calling to us? Well, through the ages, wisdom has often been imparted through parables and through stories that's the way the Old Testament would teach in Proverbs, that's the way Jesus would teach. So for this morning, I'll do a little bit different and try to impart some wisdom through some little modern day parables or some contemporary parables. The first one is this. Imagine with me a young man, and his name is Albrecht. Well, let's just call him Albert. And he knew nothing of the world beyond the little village in which he lived. And one day a stranger came to town, an old man with a large sack on his back. And out of curiosity, Albert began a conversation with this traveler, and, and he heard tales of faraway places full of mystery and wonder. So for several days after his encounter with this old man, Albert could think of nothing but the larger world that lay outside his small village. And eventually the allure of the unknown proved greater than the comfort of the familiar. So he packed up his belongings and he set out to a faraway place in search of the wisdom that he had heard in this older man. Before long, he came to a walled city, more, more grand than anything he'd ever imagined. And this city was known for the manufacture of stained glass. And so he thought to himself, well, obviously, beauty is the true aim of wisdom. So Albert became an apprentice to an old craftsman for whom he worked for two years, doing everything he was asked to do, learning all he could about the art of stained glass making. And he labored meticulously over the stained glass creations. But alas, the finished product to him just wasn't the same quality as his master, and he resolved, I don't think I'll ever be a glassmaker. So he moved on. He moved to another city, famous for its stone cutters and masons, and he said, well, beauty can't be everything in the path to wisdom. Obviously, wisdom is about utility. Obviously, wisdom is about doing something useful and helpful. So he learned a trade, this time as a stone cutter. But his ability was a little lacking as his efforts as making stained glass, and so he moved on to the next town. So making something isn't everything, he decided. Surely giving of oneself is the key. And so Albert went away to spend his time praying and meditating. And he gave his time to help feed the poor and listen to those in need. But for Albert, the restlessness continued and he moved on. And so it went, city after city, year after year, as Albert was on the path to pursue wisdom. Now he became old and he reached the great capital city where he stopped to rest with the accumulation of his objects and his memories. Intrigued by his strangeness, some of the youngsters of the town came up to him to inquire of him where had he been? What had he seen? Albert began to relate to them the stories of all of his journeys and each day brought more and more people to his tales of faraway places and to marvel at his knowledge lining up to get his advice. And his crowds would go larger and larger, and he eventually would give away all of his trinkets of glass and stone that he had made to the joy and the delight of many. He inspired people with his selflessness and with his humility. 
and the way he gave his whole heart to others. And even the king himself came to listen and seek advice. And so Albert was astonished as one day he realized that while he was out pursuing wisdom, wisdom had in fact been pursuing him. And then it hit him. Wisdom didn't have anything to do with his accomplishments. It didn't have anything to do with the things that he had collected. It had everything to do with his open heart to the journey of life. True wisdom was found in how he gave away, how he gave his heart away to people. That wisdom, just like those buoys, had been guiding him and leading him all along. He just needed to notice them. Seek wisdom, scripture says. And wisdom includes sanctified street smarts. Wisdom starts in heaven, but works at the street level where we bump shoulders with others. It isn't satisfied with information retrieval. You can't access it by the megabyte. So I hope you are hearing this day that wisdom is concerned with how we relate to people, to the world, to God, whether our hearts are open to forgiveness and mercy. Wisdom isn't just about the facts that we cram into our, our brain or whether or not we could win trivial pursuit, but how we live in faith in a relationship to others and to God. In the book of Proverbs, we hear wisdom cries out in the street, in the square. She raises her voice. And for us today, we need to stop and ask, among all the voices clamoring for our attention, all the voices of the world that are surrounding us, trying to persuade us, or trying to frighten us, or trying to lead us somewhere, are we listening to the voice? And so this morning, I invite us, not, I invite us to learn the lesson and to be quiet and to pray to quiet our hearts and listen and be open to the power of the Holy Spirit as we see the path of buoys marked out for us to follow and embody. And it is a path marked by the gentle lights of God's love seen in an unexpected act of kindness and compassion. A path marked by digging deep, even deeper into God's word of scripture to live out and apply its lessons into our daily life. A path marked by a whispered promise, when you feel alone, look around, I am closer than you think. A path marked by the buoys of hope and faith leading us to safe harbors and back out to the seas of people needing to feel and experience through our hands and our hearts the love of God in our lives through acts of justice and mercy. So let me end with one more little parable with hopefully a little bit of wisdom in it. And this one's got two rabbits in it, Wanda the Wise and Frederick the Foolish. And they're walking through a field. They're good friends. They enjoy their strolls together. And on this walk, they come up on two carrots. One of the carrots has large leaves sprouting out the top. The other looks much smaller. Frederick was excited. He ran up to the one with large leaves. And he says, I'll have this one, taking it out of the ground. Wanda shrugs her shoulder, takes the one with the little leaves. Turns out hers is much bigger. So he looks around. And he says, well, how could that be? And she says to him, oh, Frederick, you can't always judge a carrot by its leaves. So they keep on walking and came across another pair of carrots, again, differing sized leaves. And this time, Wanda chooses the carrot with the big leaves. And he says, well, I thought you said small leaves meant it'd be a large carrot. And she says, no, I said, don't judge a carrot by its leaves. But it's also important that you got to think before you choose. So for a third time, they found two carrots, different sized leaves. This time, Frederick was horribly confused. He didn't know what to do. Wanda indicated she would choose which carrot to eat, so she smiled warmly, hopped over to the carrots, inspected them, and pulled out one of them. So Frederick shrugged, went over to the other one before he was interrupted by his friend. She says, no, Frederick, this one is your carrot. But you made the choice, and I'm sure that the one you chose was the bigger of the two, because that's always how it goes. She said, Frederick, there's no point in having wisdom if you're not willing to share the benefit of it with others. You're my friend, and I want you to have this carrot. A smart rabbit with a full stomach but no friends isn't really wise, is she? In this world of ours where we have so many choices to make in our lives, we have little choices, daily choices, we have medium choices, we have big choices that we're making as a country, as a people, both big and small. We need to follow some path. There needs to be some path that guides us, that we follow, and it is the path of wisdom that calls us to share with others, to treat others as we would want to be treated, to love others as much as we love ourselves, to forgive others and show mercy, to love God with all our heart and our soul and our mind, 
to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. If those phrases sound familiar, and they really should, that's because they come from the words of Jesus Christ throughout our Gospels. The wisdom of Christ is the wisdom of the cross. And the wisdom of the cross was all about giving everything away. Just as Jesus gave his very life, he gave everything away, gave his very life so that we may have a new and abundant and most of all an eternal life. Christ's wisdom and the wisdom of the cross was in the words of Paul, foolish to the world. But to those of us who are being saved, it is the very power of God. The wisdom we follow is the wisdom of Christ that calls us to give everything away, no matter, to give everything away to everyone, no matter who they are. And so we are called this day to give compassion and give forgiveness and give grace and give hope and give love. And the world around us may look at what we do and how we act and how we give all of this away, and they may say to us, you are a complete fool. How could you love that person? How could you give to this? How could you do that? But to us, as disciples of Christ, it is the wisest decision of all. For there's no benefit in being wise if you don't share the benefit of it with others. And so in our journey through life, that journey can be stormy and it can be foggy at times. But I want you to hear this day that through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, a path has been made. And there is a way forward for all of us to navigate between the rocks and the buoys, between despair and hope, between hate and love, between darkness and light. May the wisdom of God fill us all and guide us. May we hear the words of Proverbs this day, that wisdom is calling out in the streets. Seek it. Pursue it and realize that it is, in fact, pursuing each of us. Be open and quiet yourselves in a prayer time to truly hear that voice of wisdom and the way it is guiding us. May that wisdom be with us in this time, that we may be a people of peace and a people of hope for all of God's children. Amen. Let's stand. Let's join in song together as a community as we sing in the midst of new dimensions, 2238.
Let us come to a time of prayer. It's the body of Christ, and I'm going to invite our ushers. They'll take our microphones so that if you have a prayer, a joy, or a concern, we can hear one another, and those that are hearing us at home as we recorded can hear you as well. So what are your joys this morning? What are your concerns? What are your prayers? And then I've got to make sure I turn around so I look at the choir, because they may have prayers too. And Connie, that's what? You can step up to the pulpit here. Do that. I have a couple of prayers this morning. The first one is a real prayer of joy for Marsha Schwager and her family. They have made a wonderful donation to this church uh, that has helped us to purchase good chairs for the choir, which is sitting in them now, in memory of her wonderful mom who worshiped with us as often as she could while she lived. We also have chairs in the rehearsal room. And for those of you who don't think it's important, we sit in those chairs a lot when we're rehearsing and when we're up here. And I, for one, was having a difficult time getting up and down out of the chairs here. And, and I'm still fairly mobile but I was having a hard time getting up and down, and others were too, and so now we have new chairs, and then the added piece of that joy is the chairs that we had, that we had had for 20-something years. While they needed a little bit of tender care, um, were received willingly and, and with great joy by another church who's small and start up in the city, and they came and got those chairs. So we have a prayer of joy for chairs this morning, and mostly for Masha and her family and her mom. The other prayer I have is one for us as a kind of global village of Mequon, if you will. You know I'm an alderman, and we're working on a budget for 2017. We will be meeting on Tuesday for a discussion of that budget. We will be adopting it sometime in October. I am deeply concerned by what I perceive to be benign neglect on the part of our council over a number of years now for preventive maintenance of city buildings and equipment that aren't sexy to look at, that none of you see or feel a need to see until they start falling apart and our services can't achieve what they need to achieve. I've been struggling about how to help my fellow council members recognize this and work at it with me. Uh, it's difficult. I'm a singular voice at this point, concerned about these things. We aren't even looking at them as a council, so I'm praying for guidance. I'm praying for support. I'm praying for quality approach to the needs of this city. And I ask you to pray with me. All right. Thank you, God. Other prayers, other joys, or other concerns? You may have. Yeah, artists. So we pray for the people who were injured last night in Manhattan, but also, kind of selfishly, I'm very happy that my nephew and his wife who live there were not hurt. I think that was a great blessing, but that we are concerned for the ones that were. So we pray for those injured in Manhattan with the explosion, and also um, Artis's nephew lives in Manhattan. He was not injured, so joy for that, but concern for those who were. Other prayers? Other? Yeah, Linda? Oh. <laughs> so. All right. Prayers for uh, Cole, turned 18. It's a great joy for university school going on retreat. So we pray for them. Other joys? Other, I have a couple that I want to mention to you. Um, one is for Katie's son, Byron. Um, 
Byron was in the hospital and he had surgery. He's been dismissed. So he's at home. So Byron found out that um, he had a mass in his colon. They had a suspicion it was cancer. It was confirmed. He does indeed have colon cancer. They were not able to remove it because of the size of it. My understanding is he's going to get chemotherapy. And so he's going to go to Freighter and he's going to get chemo. And so we really need to pray for Byron for his healing as he struggles and battles with this recent diagnosis of just last week of colon cancer. And so pray for Katie and for Bill, who are understandably worried about their son. So this morning, we lift up Byron. The other prayer is for Betty Wheeler. Uh, this is uh, Susan Yorio's mom. And you know, Betty was 95-ish, <laughs> kind of, 96. And she was with us for two years as she lived with them. A week and a half ago, Betty passed away. She had been in hospice, and she passed away. So I want you to pray for uh, Fran and Susan's whole family. Her entire family is gathering in Corning, New York, this coming Saturday, September 24th, to celebrate Betty's life. Now, that church is taking up a collection for memorial in Betty's name. But Susan said because Betty had been here for two years, and she had really gotten involved. I mean, at 95, 96, she got in lunch bun, she got in Tai Chi, she helped out wherever she could help out. And so the Yorios want to offer to you, her church family, who is so incredibly supportive, and she is so thankful for all your cards and your calls and your prayers and the way you reached out to Betty and you welcomed her with open arms into this community of faith, that she also wants to give you the opportunity. If you want to give some money in memory of Betty, they are going to start a memorial fund and then decide what to do with that money to benefit the church in memory and in honor of Betty. So if you were touched by Betty in some way and you would like to give something to further her legacy here in the church, um, then you are invited to do that. And you can give that and we'll have a memorial fund that will be set up for Betty Wheeler. Other prayers that you may have this morning or this day to lift up a name. As always, I invite you to keep those on our prayer chain, on, the in, on our insert in your prayers, all these different names that represent different situations and circumstances of life, and uh, keep them in your prayers as well as our hearts at home as well. So with all these prayers that you've named and those in our hearts, let's pause and let's pray. Oh God, we <clears throat> gather this morning in the midst of your wisdom and your grace and your hope. We gather, our Lord, to hear and to quiet our hearts so that we may hear your voice calling out to us, that voice of wisdom crying out into the streets, that is calling us to join you out into the street, the streets here around us, the streets of the neighboring cities, the streets of our state, our nation, and our world. For that, O oh Lord, is where your love and your grace and your hope are lived out through us as your servants. So, O Lord, help us to truly quiet our hearts to hear your voice of wisdom that is leading us, that is guiding us. Let us seek your wisdom in Scripture and seek it through prayer and seek your wisdom found in those others that you place in our path before us. And truly let us seek the wisdom of the cross and the wisdom of Jesus Christ, of the cross that calls us to give everything away as Christ modeled for us, to give away grace and hope. As we this morning lift up you in prayer, those that really need this to wash over them, we lift up to you those that are um, struggling with a recent cancer diagnosis, and we pray for healing for them. We pray for those that may find themselves in the hospital or assisted living centers as we pray for your healing presence to be with them. We pray, O oh Lord, for those injured, in explosions and for those natural calamities. And we pray for those affected by violence on our city streets and for those living in places of injustice and of war and of extreme poverty. Oh Lord, there is no end to the troubles and difficulties of this world. Sometimes it seems like we are heading for the rocks. But oh Lord, you are there and you are leading us and guiding us and you do not abandon us and you do not lead us alone, leave us alone. So, Lord, this morning we pray, as our hearts are quiet, that we come this morning committing ourselves to truly seek you out, your wisdom and your path you lay before us of grace and of hope, of love, of salvation. 
Well, Lord, we also gather very mindful of our many blessings, blessings of family, of friends, of those who journey with us, of those who inspire us, of your church family that walks with us and prays for us, of the body of Christ, and of your Son, Jesus Christ, who knows our hurts and our struggles and who walks with us and in whose name we follow. Oh, Lord, we come with these prayers, but there are others on our hearts, and so we just, we just quiet our, our hearts in this time to really let your voice of wisdom be heard, to lift you the deepest prayers of our hearts in this time of silent prayer. O oh Lord, as you've heard our prayers both silent and spoken, hear us now as we join with one voice as we pray together as your church, our Father. First of all, remember that after worship is our rally day. It's our uh, church picnic, but we're not outside. We'll instead be in Fellowship Hall. So you're all invited. And um, today, don't go in the parlor looking for fellowship time because you won't find it. Fellowship time is in Fellowship Hall because it's incorporated in with our picnic. And then we're going to have our dessert auction to raise funds for children's ministry. So I hope you'll come. It's always been a fun thing that we do together. So come for the food and fun. Little change to our choir schedule. Sanctuary choir today will rehearse at 5. Women's choir at 6. Um, tai Chi, Monday and Friday, I invite you to come be a part of uh, that group. And Lunch Bunch meeting every Tuesday now with our study at 11 and then lunch at noon and we're doing a study called Seeing Gray in a World of Black and White. And this coming Saturday, September 24th at 5, it's a new time for us because we want to be in daylight. We'll do our outdoor worship around the fire ring this coming Saturday at 5. So if you haven't been to any of the others, I invite you to come to this one and uh, come worship outdoors. Also, um, sign up today to help at the meal site. We have two of them coming up in the month of September, one on the 22nd, one on the 29th. And there's sign-up sheets at the bottom of the stairs. We just meet at the church at 4.30 to carpool. Or we need desserts and fruit, which you can bring that day and place in the parlor uh, for us. Also, our next uh, host week for Family Promise is coming up in October. And the sheets are out in the Narthex. So as you leave to go down to the rally day, to the picnic and fellowship time and the dessert auction, you can stop at the table and... Um, Sign up if you so choose. The other thing I will mention is uh, today we take one of our special offerings through the United Methodist Church, and in your um, bulletin is an envelope for Student Day. And so we thought this would be appropriate as we're beginning Sunday school and kids are going back to school, that this will be an offering for Student Day to help with scholarships and to help support those going on for education. So if you'd like to contribute to that, you can place that in the offering plate. Otherwise, I invite you to read through the bulletin insert for other announcements and things that are going on in the life of our church. I don't think I missed anything. So I want to invite us with open hands and heart to come to offer God all that we are as we give of our blessings. And I'll invite our ushers forward to take our morning offering and our sanctuary choir for another gift of music.
Let us pray. O oh God, for all the many, many blessings of our lives, we give you thanks and praise this morning as we this day offer them back to you, as we offer our hearts, as we offer our lives to be your people, to be your hands and your feet and your heart of your grace, of your hope, of your wisdom, of your peace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's join in our final hymn found in our green worship and song hymnal. It's called The Wilderness Wandering People. Him three one one three. So my prayer today is what we sung, that as we go forward into this world with all the many paths and all the many choices, that we let compassion be our compass and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, be our guide. May it guide us, may it lead us, may it move us forward to be a people of hope and a people of unswerving grace and love and most of all of peace. As we sing together and end our service, go in the peace of God.
Thank you.